we go. Check this out. So if you've noticed, I have two rack toms and a floor tom. What I've just done today, and I, that's why I thought about making this video, is I raised the floor tom to a more sort of hanging floor tom position for the following technique, which is really, really helpful for me because my left arm has been really laggardy. And I've really never been sure how much is just the shake that keeps me from doing it, or it's so uncomfortable with the shake, so I don't try it enough. But so check this out. I have the Phil collins -y setup. This would probably be more, what, 73? So again, I have just the drums coming through here. I don't know how they're coming in. I hope they're not too loud. But I hope they're loud enough that you can hear it. So what I'm doing is this. I mentioned before in another video, uh, this is really helpful. Remember I said the speed bag? I mean, which is a totally common sense concept that I'm sure drummers have said before. And this is, you know. And what's nice about that is like, not that you'd ever be, in fact, this is more appropriate to drumming than it is to boxing. How many times in boxing is in a real boxing fight, is somebody going to step on the opponent's foot? Like in a cartoon and go, chunk -a -ch -chunk -a -ch -chunk -a. it's not going to happen. This is just for speed, like an ancillary thing. The speed bag, de facto, veritably comes in handy with drums. Because you will, you will do this sometime. I inverted it. Because you're just working on your singles, which you will do. So what I do is I treat it, I will do rudiments, but really just starting now with single strokes. Now, if I ass around, I can go faster. But I have to be, we all do as drummers, have to be smart enough to know if you can really go fast, kind of sustaining an awkward feeling in your hands. Like when I do this, I feel like I'm kind of making it up as I go along, whereas I know there's a way, as a lot of us drummers do, there has to be a way for it to feel the exact same, nice and effortless and totally efficient. So I have to look for it in Slow It Downville. <laughs> See how those are tuned minory? Bow, 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 bow. I like doing that sometimes. All right, going back from right to left, which I will lead with the left hand. You'll notice there I left with the left, <laughs> I led with the left coming back, which I didn't mean to do, but I have really been devoting so much time to my left hand, I have done that sometimes. Real slow. And it might be self-defeating, but I do that in case I get nervous or I feel like I'm not going to execute it properly, and I have the ability to lead with the left to the right. Does that make sense? But I'm going to do the more, the more routine-like, um, Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Because what happens is when you do three on the end, eventually you'll do three on either end. I've made videos about this before, but you'll do three on either end. One, we'll start though, just with two here. Just right, left, 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 right, left. So see how I'm putting two strokes. Of course I left the left hand. I used to find this the most, this is the most helpful as per like the speed bag. It's relative to the speed bag because you're really speed bagging. Speed bagging. So to get that to a point where I get, I'm trying to get comfortable. So I'll have to forego some speed, which is a, a compromise I always hate to do. But the only way you can get it down is if you can do it slow, you can do it faster. If you can do something fast, it doesn't mean you can do it slow. There's the minor. 
So I'll try to find a tempo. And I don't have a click or anything on that, but just where I almost feel like you're on like a pre-core or a treadmill. Or if you're sort of for it's almost like being forced on a treadmill to sort of keep the, um, well, in a sense, to keep the um, punching bag concept going. If you're going. Or. Remember, you can alternate the speed bag like that. It'd be like going chunk. Chunk, 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 you know what I mean? Or chunk, 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 chunk. It's all the same back and forth as I try to explain. I bring in paradiddles, straight up. But in, so what I've done here and I've explained in the video, I do that because I'm giving my left hand its own rack tom. Because there is a subtle thing where if I'm going. I feel like my left hand is being sort of led along with my right. And even though if I still do a right hand lead here, in my mind like musically can automatically detect when this sounds harried or hurried or it feels funny. And that's when you kind of really, this is what it takes, man. You got you got it's like a, like Phil Stanger, you say. It's like a mountain you got to climb. Well, actually, did Steve Smith say that and many other drummers? But it's a fact. Like you might pick up some stuff. We can kind of go fast for, sp see, I'm really, I'm not famous for that, but a lot of people, the reason why people think sometimes in recording stuff that I'm faster than I am is that those are just, they're not, you know what I mean? Anyway, but back to this paradiddle, right, left, right, right. A little faster for a second. Try to get a, try to get a, like a, not a groove musically, but like a physical groove, but then just bringing it down. For me, it's really hard to relax. But that's where, yeah, from what I've heard anyway, from very fast drummers, is where all the speed lies. And sometimes if I have a really bad cold or something where I'm really automatically tired, it seems to sort of turn off my ADD sort of thing. I'll find like my, like I'm like not really caring, like I'm like paying attention to something else. And, and suddenly your hands will sort of start to take it on themselves a little. And I know that sounds cocky, but it sort of does happen. So what starts to happen here is I, I feel my wrist drooping lower, which then I think to myself, like, that's what a lot of real fast drummers, the, the wrists always seem like this. So I become conscious of that, my wrists are doing that, but then there comes a point where I'm not going to try to take the advantage of going faster right away. I'm just going to, like, intentionally, I'm just going to let it, like, happen. Different rudiment type things. And then you go on automatic pilot with rudiments like a paradiddle. You just gotta kinda keep in the back of your mind and make sure it feels comfortable, no matter what uh, speed you're doing. Remember, this is this is serious Saturday. Like I'm really going out of my way to try to make this relatable, chock full of information. God, is it humid down here? It's a scorcher in the Midwest. It is. But now, really, in all seriousness, I try to be. Funny helps sometimes, right? Sometimes I'm so nervous when I make these videos. Stuff I actually say sounds funny. It's strange. The act of, obser of observing disturbs the observed. But anyway, so check this out, though. This is important. A very important, just as important as a paradiddle is. This concept is important. To get to the point where you just do stuff. Singles. Start with singles. Remember, that's why it's, it's the number one rudiment, because it's the most basic right to left. We only have two arms. It's the most basic. You're playing. Here is the thing that I've always been meaning to make a video on. You're playing catch with your hemispheres. I'm telling you, that sounds ridiculous. Think for a minute. Uh, uh, like this guy is whacked. Now, in all seriousness, though, you really are. Physically, you are. <laughs> But I think mentally you are too, because if you're a real musical person, I think the musical is in the left hemisphere. Or is it the right hemisphere? But then your ability to, to really pay attention, do stuff, so it's in a different part of the brain that sometimes I have a hard time sort of, I'm serious, so I'm killing two birds with one stone. I'm do the left or right actually physically. <laughs> but I think when I relax, you relax. It, it, um, I think the anxiety area of the brain is totally counterproductive to being so relaxed where you're like, Bob Singles, 
Bob or Roberta Singles. The thing that keeps you, I'm telling you, or me, I think, is any type of anxiety you have. Your body, it all feels like, 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 you're, like your adrenaline's pumping a little. Now, I think you can cross the threshold of learning how to do that super fast and relax and then have anxiety, but you still won't do it as optimally as you can. But I feel like you have to go through the door of speed. You really have to get to the point where you're really like, like, I'm, I'm dead serious because it's weird. I noticed with my hands, watch, check this out. If I think anxiety, think like, all right, think of that time when I was a kid, we threw, ro- we threw snowballs at cars, and for the next half hour, it was chaos. It was palpable. Uh, I'll play stiff, right? Marky Thomason's going to give us away. No, he's not. No, see how it messes up? Like, I'm kind of reliving it. It's like, I'm dead serious. But see, that is like a spike in my, what would it be, cortisol? But what I'm saying is, is the concepts which I've delivered of taking your time and be, the important concept, which really is the one I'm saying, of taking your time, putting it off to sort of a... I guess in the more mechanical part of your brain, you get relaxed, or I do anyway, blah, 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 and I start hearing it melodically. Where, like, my wrists and arms can sort of take over, blah, 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 but I have to in the other part, in a certain part of anxious part of my brain, that you, I guess maybe you can do it from a different part of your brain, where I gotta say, all right, well, you know, is he doing it right? Is he doing it even? But the thing is, is even that sort of feeling, like, come on, you, come on, buddy, that is counterproductive. You literally have to kick out. Imagine now what I'm doing is I'm kicking out of the party all, you know, bullies and, and things, stressors, that make, and you're just in the room and you're hanging out and there's a bag of Matt's chocolate chip cookies, the TV's on, and there's some three stooges you haven't seen for a while, a couple friends stop by, you hang out for a little while. It's one of those things where you just feel really <sighs> able to try and go... Preferably to a melody. That, again, that's why I have the drums tuned. Minery. Uh, you know, that's not minery. Oh, it is kind of. Uh, th- if this one sounds like this, it's it's major. Bo, bo, bo. But on first listen, there's overtones. It doesn't. It's kind of minor. Uh, and it's the contrast of, uh, uh, I'm serious. Huh? Worries all that here and da 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 da, and then go here. I'm dead serious. This will all meld in. You'll get your technique down. This will inspire you to make a crazy song. Hang on, I'm relaxing. Serious Saturday. Trying to get those, seriously now, trying to get those fingers, it kind of happens, like a door kind of opens. But that's only about as fast as I can go, but I can tell that's where speed lives. And that's why these freaking guys and gals, real fast, it dawned on me. They start out real slow. Because I think it's a mental pro- I'm dead serious. Like they think you're like, okay, I remember I gotta relax. <sighs> Better get paid after this kick. The promoter seemed like a real scumbag. See how, see how if you start thinking stuff like that? Oh, at the time I crashed on the bike and it really hurt. I didn't go to the hospital, but it was really painful and it really was crazy. It scared the shite out of me. But then you think about like that time, like summer, 1987. You're like, yeah, summer. No, but what, seriously, watch what happened. Right in here, there comes a very strange, it's like a finger pump. It's a little bit of the wrist. It's like one plus one equals 7.93. But there's a way, I think, for people to really kind of hear, just kind of go. In fact, you could design a mechanism. Imagine a long stick, and at the very end, there's a small stick. And if you had a way to sort of flick it, where it automatically sort of, because what that does is it mimics your arm with your wrist. But imagine like on your wrist, it would make sense that chain-wise, it might help. I'm dead serious here. Somebody make a long stick, twice as long as the arm, my arm, and then maybe twice as long as this, but on the end. So you have two arm lengths, and then maybe two hand lengths. And you get to a point where you can sort of flick it. It's like the, I'm dead serious here, because this is serious Saturday. It's like the, like I learned in karate, in the six months I took it before I was beat up by my sensei, six degree black belt from the actual island of Japan. Um, 
But it's like that. It's weird. And people, and like I know I'd always approach it like, like this. Watch. Er. Like there's a way, a fundamental way that works. But you got to get it. It's sort of like, like check this out. So here's like a, a finger molar, like a drop catch, right? Like I can do that awkwardly. But what I can do is I can alternate those. I'm dead serious. Hang on a second. I used to be able to do this a lot. See, I'm alternating. That molary thing is like playing catch. My right and left hemispheres are playing catch with that, but it's not molar. It's finger. That's technically not molar. It might be Morello. Is Joe Morello and molar, wait a minute, are those, what if they use the exact same letters? Morello. M-O-R-E. So you need two O's in Morello and molar. There are two. No, there's just one Ellen Muller. Never mind. So, so what I'm trying to do is I'm doing a little bit of a hand pump. which might be considered molary, but also, too, trying to then corral any rebound. See, the key is to get to the point where the rebound, you don't get the way of the stick. I know that sound. You always hear, like, great players say, well, you don't get the way of the stick. The fact of the matter is there comes an optimal time where sticks will operate in an optimal range if they could float in space and do it on their own will. So what you have to do is you get the hands to get it to a point where I think it's at the most uh, most optimal way to go efficiently up and down, which will eventually do speed, probably, but where your hand's there to just slightly guide the stick. Like, is that's why I think they say it's like playing on, Buddy used to say it's like playing on air, because kind of the sticks were doing all the work, but it, Buddy and these folks get the thing off the ground, and then they just sort of nudge it along a little. Like, you just got to, but is it evenly in a fit? So hang on. I'll do a molary back and forth. A triplet, it's not molary. Again, I'm trying to get out of, like I feel, I'm trying to get anxiety out. Hang on, anxiety out. Here, here, like it, I can slip into a tiny here. I'm trying to pick what, well, there's got to be another thing that feels like this. Meaning your hands feel like they're moving, like they're dancing. Which is in one thing when you're a guy, it's a little embarrassing, at least for me it is. Like I kind of feel like somebody's going to pop in the room here and say, look at his hands. They're dancing. It's so ridiculous. And I'm going to be like, hang on, hang on. And I'm not kidding about it. So here we go. So I'm relaxing. Relaxing. Kind of. Now I can fool around with the speed there, but I still feel like my anxiety's ruining it. Like I might be able to get up there. I know that's not super fast, but hear how even it kind of is. Somebody told me that, yeah, Terry, sometimes real fast drummers, they're playing faster than you think. Well, it's not as fast as you think they are, but it sounds a lot faster because it's even, machine gunning. Now, I'm doing those singles. Which I feel like is the Woody Woodpecker putting a red one into the grind down. I'm getting a, 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 a toothpick. I'm serious. There's a way to go. But where I apply roundabout to the beginning of the argument, this. Rel relax like this. Because I can tell you, when I'm doing this, I'm relaxed. But I'm going... I'm thinking in my mind right at that moment, like, how the hell did Bonham do this so smoothly and efficiently, and a lot of drummers can, on Achilles' last hand? Again, this was this was Serious Saturday. Join us for next week's Serious Saturday. And again, thank you to all my subscribers, and just to everybody. I got 50,000 subscribers. I'm very, that makes me very happy. Live musicians coming soon. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Oh, don't forget, PFOZ, man. Remember, they're cranking out videos. They just cranked out... We're going to groove, and I can't quit you, baby. P if you type in PFOZ to Google or YouTube or anything, and the page will come up. That's George Flutus and the Dudes. Thank you.